Hey everyone, welcome back to Brown Coat Nerd. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Century Arms C308, which is a build that they have done um, using surplus Spanish Setmi C parts. Um, so first off, I'm going to kind of touch on the different commercial versions of the Setmi C that were imported in the U.S. Then we'll go over specifically the C308. Um, and then I'm going to save the history for last because most people know the history. It's kind of long and drawn out to explain it all um, about how most people think that this is a G3 clone. It's not a G3 clone. If anything, the G3 is actually a clone of this. Um, and many people say, oh, it's German engineering. Oh, but this came out of Spain. But it is still German engineering. So we'll get into the history at the very end there. So... Like I said, what we have in front of us here is the Century Arms C308. Now, Century um, did make at least one other build um, using surplus Set Me C parts, but it's not the same setup that we have here. Let me get the Spanish hat out of the way. So let's touch on that real quick. Um, I'll see a lot of people talk about the quote-unquote early C308s that do not have the pick rail up top here. Um, I believe that they are referring to the Century Set Me Sporter um, rather than actually the C308. Now, I did find another Century build out there that was just simply marked um, Set Me. There was not a Sporter at the end. It just had Set Me, 308, and in quotations, 762. Um, and then there's the other Century Set Me Sporter. 308 cal and that's all in one line on the side here so i don't know if people well actually i personally have ran into um at least two people that thought that they had one of the early quote-unquote c308s and then it actually turned out that they had the century set me sporter and they are different guns the set me sporters will have a metal lower it won't have this ugly um polymer one on here and they will not have the uh, pick rail up top here. Those also seem to have quite a bit of um, production issues. Like I think a lot of the bad reputation that the C308 gets, not all of it, but a lot of it I think comes from those early Setney Sporter Century builds. They earn some of it on their own. <laughs> um, but I think a lot of those come from those earlier builds. You'll see pictures where the weld is missing right here. You can see right through it. And I've also um, have seen some people talk about how they had one, and it actually was really good. So I think it was very much a case of hit or miss on those, which, I mean, Century builds, they're, they're kind of known for being hit or miss, so no surprise there. So first off, if someone has a early C308 with the, uh, the rail on top there, please comment um, on that and, you know, roughly what year you picked it up. You know, if it actually says C308 Sporter, not just simply Century Sporter. Um, at least twice online, um, I've spoken with people and they're like, no, I've got one of those early builds. You know, and I, I was, you know, being polite, it wasn't being a jerk or anything, but I was like, well, send me a picture of the side plate here. I'm really curious. Um, and both times it ended up being that they actually just simply had this set me Sporter 308 cal and they were like whoa i i could have sworn it said c308 and so i don't know if they're just reading it semi sporter 308 cal and that c from the cow they're thinking 308 c c 308 i don't know but there seems to be kind of like a mandela effect you know where people are swearing that it said c308 and they take a closer look and realize that their century set me simply says set me sporter and like i said there's that other one that i came across that just simply said set me it didn't have sporter in it. it didn't say c308 um so i don't know which one came first there there might be more different nameplates out there so what i'm getting at though is today we're talking about a c308 sporter that is the proper name of this particular build from century now out of the century builds this was probably the route um the safest route i would go would be with the newer C308, and I'm saying newer again. I mean newer century set me build. Now, there is another 
semi-auto civilian sent me out there that I know of. And there might be some small batch runs from other companies out there, but these are the Century ones are definitely the most common. Um, and the Sent Me C first came into the US actually as a Sent Me built semi-auto for the US market. And those were imported by Mars in the mid 60s, so quite a while ago. And they only imported around um, 1,200. So there's not a whole lot of those. I'm sure they go for a premium. Um, but if I had my pick on all of the, you know, civilian versions of the Sent Me C, I'd go with the Mars, excuse me, import C308 on that. Um, and then also in that Mars import C308, it would have the wood handguard like this. It tended to be, you know, uh, really nice wood grain. And then the butt stock on it would be similar to this, but it was a little bit wider. I think a little bit thicker back here. And then the most obvious thing is it has a really thick and to be honest, kind of a funky looking, um, butt pad on it as well. So hold on guys, I need to crack one open here. Um, so you know how a lot of times I'll be like, this is going to be a quick video and the video ends up being 30 minutes. This video I've kind of been dreading to make because I know it's going to be a long one. So go ahead, get comfortable, put your feet up, crack open a cold one if you need to. Before people start freaking out on me for drinking and handling firearms, it's just a Dr. Pepper. Long time viewers know. I have a sick addiction for this 23 flavored soda. All right, so there's your kind of crash course on all the set me C's that were made available in those earlier century builds. They all came with the original um, old school wood surplus furniture. These newer C308s, you've got some more options. Um, like I said, they all come with a rail up top now. Um, you have an option. Originally, they came in in polymer furniture. Um, it was kind of G3 looking polymer furniture. Um, so I'd understand why people would say that this is a G3 clone. Um, but this came before the G3. So if anything, it's the other way around. But that polymer furniture, I do not believe is surplus. I believe it's new. And the one big drawback to me on that is the polymer handguard does not have a heat shield in it like the actual military made polymer handguards. Um, you'll see a lot of videos of people shooting these with the polymer furniture on there and like after one or two mags, they're like, whoo, it's getting toasty. Um, I haven't shot this a whole bunch. Um, I've only been able to take this out to the range twice and each time I was only able to find one box of uh, 308. So I've shot a total of 40 rounds through here. Um, you know, it's just one mag each time. This handguard didn't get close to getting hot. The wood dissipated the heat pretty well. Um, but, you know, it's also only 20 rounds. And I will say real quick, shooting impressions on it, um, I didn't have any hiccups, but it's not like I was really pushing it. Um, it's got a weird break-in period, which I'll try to remember to bring up here in a second. Um, so, real brief, real brief shooting experience on it. It went well. Um... So they also offered these, um, I don't know if it's a Cerakote finish or what, but they do offer these once in a while in a different color. You don't see those pop up too often. Um, they came in kind of a sand tan color. I believe they also offered them in gray. And then they had a color that they were calling Patriot Brown, which was basically flat dark earth. And it was kind of, you know, a dark brown color. And those, even the lower was painted um, to match the gun. All of those came with a polymer furniture on it. Um, at first, Century did not offer this C308 with the wood, wood furniture on it, uh, whereas their previous builds, they did. So that's when this first came out. It was many, many years ago um, when I kind of had been reintroduced to shooting sports via a good friend of mine. And I was, at the time, I was kind of like, you know, I don't want a full-on surplus because I had I was collecting a lot of bolt actions at the time. Like, I want something a little bit more modern, something that's not 100% surplus, so I won't feel bad, you know, kind of tinkering around and having fun um, modifying it. And that's when these C-308s caught my eye. And back then, they only offered them in the polymer furniture, um, but a lot of people were getting the surplus wood furniture and putting that on there. And I just thought that looked absolutely beautiful. And that was my plan. And I actually remember many, many years ago, I had set aside money to order one of these. Um, got on there, 
added the C308 to my cart, and I was like, you know what, let me look around. Typically before I buy a gun online, I'll hit up like all my local gun stores, um, see what they have, just make sure that, you know, something didn't pop up in them and I'm missing out on a good deal. So I kind of decided to do that on the Classic Firearms webpage. And I was looking around at different guns they had, and one thing that popped up is, you know, like the little section of people that looked at this also looked at these or whatever, or purchased these. And I found another Century build that at the time I never even heard of. You know, this is one of those cases where I just bought it and then I did research, which I don't recommend. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, but I came, came across another Roller Delay Century build, and that was their C93, which is this right here, which is built from HK Parts out of Malaysia, I believe. There's a contract um, there. So this is essentially an HK. 33 would have been the military de designation, civilians 93. And, of course, they had several different variants of these as well. So I ended up buying that gun. Fun story, um, we'll just put this back up here for a little bit. Um, Classic ran out of these before mine even shipped. And so I started to get a little nervous, um, but mine did ship. So I was relieved there, and then it showed up at my FFL. And that night, before I had a chance to pick it up, um, someone hooked up some chains to the front of the store of my FFL and robbed the freaking place. Luckily, no one was there, so no one's life was put in danger. It was after hours. Um, and then the next morning, I was rather nervous. <laughs> I discovered, luckily, since my gun was a transfer, it was in the back. Um, and they cleaned this place out pretty good. Luckily, it was skipped over. And luckily, no one was harmed, like I said. So, I missed out on my chance to buy one of these a while back. And that was several years ago. Like I've had that C93 since I, before I started doing these YouTube videos. Um, it's, it's been a minute. Um, and so this has always kind of lingered in the back of my head. You know, I didn't have any 308s in my collection. And then they started putting these out with the actual surplus wood furniture. I was like, all right, well, that's one less hassle I need to deal with. Um, and so then fairly recently, um, now to be honest with you, I can't remember. If, I think I bought this right after I bought the set me L. Um, I was getting ready to say, I can't remember if it was right before or right after. They were real close to each other. I believe this was right after. But a friend of mine, the same guy that introduced me to shooting, or reintroduced me to shooting, um, was selling one of his old guns. This was actually um, the first AK I'd ever fired. And this was one of the guns that we shot that weekend when he brought me out and reintroduced me to everything. So there's kind of sentimental attachment um, to that gun. Sneak peek. We'll eventually get around to reviewing it. I finally got some indoor range friendly ammo. That's why I bought this stuff because it's ridiculously expensive. Um, so I was going to buy that. So I sold uh, some guns to purchase it so I could get some funds to purchase it because he was kind of needing funds soon. So it was a uh, act now or, you know, you, you miss out. Um, and luckily it came to me first too, which I appreciate because he knew I had a little connection to that um, AK. Then I started doing a little more research on that AK. Like I said, it's another century build. And, you know, I decided to kind of back out because it looked like it needed some work done to it. And I was like, I don't really want to throw in more money, you know, into it. But at the same time, it was worth it. Um, so I reluctantly backed out of that deal. And then I was stuck in a situation of I just sold some guns to get another gun. But then I didn't get that gun to fill the hole in my heart. So I had money burning hole in my pocket and I was like, oh, yeah, that old Century C-308. Um, and I knew the Classic had been advertising these at the time. At the time. I wrote that down. So, I think I purchased this just in time. Um, I ordered this June 1st of 2020. Now, I was even a little reluctant to go ahead and order this because... In the past, sometimes there were some really good sales on these. And the thing that sucks about those really good sales is like, do you need to be patient? Will it come back around? Sometimes it was just a really good freaking sale. And if you missed out, you missed out. Um, I know when I first looked at this, it was either $500 or $550. Um, it was the exact same cost as that C93 that I ended up getting instead. 
Um, and also I knew there, I think it was a Mr. Gunslinger video. Someone put out a video talking about these and they're like, hey, you know, hurry up, get to Cabela's, they got this crazy deal. And I think what it was is, it was the polymer furniture C308. It did come with the five round mag, which sometimes, these come with all kinds of different mag uh, options. Um, so the five round mag basically looks like this. This is, I haven't had a chance to clean this and it's completely covered in Cosmoline or whatever grease they put on it, so. Uh, just a little baby five round mag. I believe it's military issue, so I don't know if they use these for parade or for training or what exactly the purpose of those are, but they're they're pretty common. Um, so it only came with one five round mag and that was it. But you got a mail-in rebate, and I think your price ended up being oh, there's one of Kaylee's hairs. Um, I think the price ended up being after the mail-in rebate like three fifty or four fifty, like something just dirt freaking cheap. And so that was always in the back of my mind. Well, when I had that money burning a hole in my pocket on June 1st of 2020, this was listed on Classic Firearms for $6.50. So I was a little reluctant to do it. Um, but you know what? I was like, screw it. You know, I've got the C93, which is roller delay. I have the Set Me L, which is what replaced this, which is roller delay. I'm like, this more than ever has a spot in my collection. And I've always really wanted to, you know take the gamble on getting one of these. So I went ahead and purchased it. The other thing is too, you know, they're building these off of surplus parts kits. Once they run out of those kits, that's it. They're not gonna produce more parts kits. Um, so there is a specific set number at which point they'll run out. Now the flip side of that is, Set Me made a bunch of these. <laughs> I have no clue how many parts kits Century has. I'm sure it's a bunch. So this isn't anything like the Set Me L. You know, Mark Lamar's producing 5,000. Um, Hill and Mac, I think, produced one or 2,000. And then you've got the home builds. And that's it. You know, pretty limited production on those. The, it, not the case with the C3. Like, these set me Cs were just freaking mass produced for years and years and years. The L had a short life, so there wasn't that many. So I decided, you know, I'll, I'll just get one now. You know, there might be some good sales. In the future, and I'll feel stupid, but at the same time, the price is probably going to go up, up, up. And that was before the coup really took full effect. And boy, did that price go up, up, up. So I purchased this. It was almost the, almost the exact same story as the C93, only my FFL didn't get broke into. Um, but I ordered this. Before it even got shipped out, the website listed them as being out of stock. Um, so was lucky there. And a lot of times, you know, uh, Classic will you know, or Atlantic or whoever's carrying these, they'll run out of them and then they'll get another batch in. So if you've got an online shop that you like to shop at and you see that they ran out, it's not like, oh, that's it, you missed your chance. You know, they, they spit these out in batches. Um, So got this, they ran out of stock shortly thereafter and maybe a month after that, maybe two months, um, they got the Set Me C308 in stock again, but as a different packaged deal. I believe it came with four, maybe three, Set Me mags. This one came with two of the Set Me mags. The Set Me mags are steel and they have this slight curve to them. If you get one with the polymer furniture, um, I believe those always come with the straight aluminum G3 style mags. Um, this will run either mag. I've heard some people say that the HK steel mags have some issues. Um, and like I said, I've only taken this out 40 rounds total and I just used the same uh, set me mag it came with uh, So I haven't had a chance to use the aluminum one But so anyways that deal came with uh, four set me mags um, A bottle of frog lube, which is you know, that's probably like 15 bucks and these set me mags I see go for anywhere from like 25 to 38 bucks So you get you know roughly a $60 value with the extra mags $15 bottle of frog lube. Um, it came with a hard case Which is probably a you know bottom of the barrel quality wise hard case i'm just guessing i have no clue i i didn't see the hard case but you know what maybe 25 bucks there and then it did come with one of their little you know mag loaders you'll see the mag loaders pop up a lot i think they were actually made for the military so you'll see them pop up in surplus stores a bunch it's really not needed these are easy mags to load the springs not stiff it's only 20 rounds and the 308 caliber, you know, kind of being a larger casing, I find it pretty easy to load. 
Um, I never see myself using one of those. Um, and it's, it doesn't necessarily look cool, so I would never use it as a display item. For me, it's just no use whatsoever. And I've seen those online. The price is all over the place on those. I've seen them for 15 bucks, and then like all the way up to like 60 or 70 bucks. Um, but like I said, to me, that, that Mad Logger, it, it adds no value. So that whole little kit, which honestly, to me, you're getting like an extra $60 worth of mags. The other stuff is whatever. That setup was running $9.99. I was like, holy crap, you know? <laughs> um, so I felt a little bit better for uh, paying $6.50 for this when I did. And also, when they put out that $9.99 little set me kit, I made fun of them. You know, I laughed at them and... Um, I'm sure a lot of other people did too, but the crazy part is like within a week, one week, they were sold out. Um, and you know, it's, it's coof season and the prices on anything gun related are just stupid high and all over the place too. It's, it's crazy nuts. So like I said, 650 all of a sudden, um, wasn't a bad deal at all. Now, the break-in period on this, I found rather interesting. So, another highlight that is a reason I'd take the C308 over any of the other Century um, Set Me builds is the C308 is using a PTR receiver and a PTR barrel. Um, and if you don't know who PTR is, it's a company and they make um, like G3 clones, and they make, I believe, 93 clones and MP5 clones. They do a lot of the roller delay HK model clones, and I believe they even bought some old HK tooling. So they're making them on HK equipment, and they've got a really good reputation. And you can get a, I think, a basic PTR 91, which is, you know, the semi-auto version of the G3, it's going to be better than this. Um, and then I think those run like just under a thousand bucks. So, you know, that thousand dollar little package with one of these, I would have just got freaking PTR. Now, I didn't look at the prices of the PTR. Maybe the prices of the PTR at that time have skyrocketed as well. Um, are you guys getting washed out there? Uh, turn the color down just a hair. Um, so that was an advantage. I've heard two things. I know I said break and period. We're getting there soon. Um, there's two different schools of thought of PTR's involvement of this that I've seen a lot of people talk about. Some people will say that PTR simply supplied the uh, receiver and the barrel, and then Century or whoever Century contracts out to assemble these, it was left up to them to assemble it. They're just getting better quality parts. I've also seen a lot of people saying that this build is now completely out of Century's hands. It just has their name on it. And that they are supplying PTR with the Set Me C parts. And PTR is not only supplying the receiver and barrel, but they're also assembling them in-house. Which, in my opinion, would be a much better thing. But there's still quality control issues that you hear a lot of people complaining about on these. I've got two small issues on this we'll get to in a little bit. So I find that a little bit hard to believe that PTR would allow that to go out with those issues. At the same time, it says Century Arms. It doesn't say PTR. So they might be like, screw it, get it out. It's another unit. You know, it's not really giving them a bad reputation necessarily. So the reason I bring up this right before the break-in procedures, I had a buddy of mine buy a PTR-91. And shortly after he got it, he called me up and he was like, I was going through the owner's manual and this break-in period is ridiculous. Um, and I was flipping through this owner's manual, the C308 owner's manual, and it does have break-in procedures on page eight, if you're following along at home. And these are the exact same procedures that his PTR had listed. Now, obviously this is using the PTR barrel. So maybe this is something that they just kind of passed along. And, you know, it's not like this is a PTR owner's manual. It says C308 on there. Um, but the, and so this break-in period, I read it and I was like, wow, that's the same as PTR, but do people actually do it? And so I, I got online and, you know, found several people that had PTRs and I was like, is this break-in period really necessary? A lot of people had no clue <laughs> that was the break-in period. And they're like, well, I didn't do it. And, you know, mine's plenty accurate. And I've had other people be like, no, yeah, I saw that. And I thought it was ridiculous and I'm not wasting my time with it. 
So the break-in period is fire 10 single shots. After each shot, push a cotton patch wet with solvent through the bore. Then wet a bronze brush with solvent and stroke the barrel five to 10 times. Follow with another wet patch and then enough dry patches to completely remove any solvents and or wetness from the barrel. Fire 10 to 20 shots. Clean as above after each round of firing. Repeat step two until you have reached the suggested 200 to 300 rounds. Now I'm stuck using an indoor range and they do not have a uh, cleaning booth like some ranges do. And even if they did, that's gonna eat up my hour of range time really freaking quick. Um, now if like it was in my younger days out in the country where I could just step out the kitchen door and you know, fire from the steps, well, I probably would. Not that I think it's necessarily needed, it might be overkill, but I'm a little OCD on that stuff. And in that situation, all I need is just a little bit of, you know, time and patience. So I'd probably do it, or at least get close um, to following that. But that's just going to eat up a lot of freaking time. Um, and so at least we know there's, they're saying there's going to be a, roughly a 200 to 300 round break-in period. So 40, down, 40 rounds down, several more to go. And then right below that, it says during this break-in period you may experience the following, and it just goes through like failure to feeds and stuff like that, and issues you have there. So I saw that, and I was kind of surprised, once again, it was just the um, 40 rounds, but I was kind of surprised um, that I didn't at least have a single issue, but you know, 40 rounds. And that first time I went out, I think it was Winchester, white box 308, I honestly, I cannot remember at all for some reason. Um, the second time I went out, I was using this PMC Bronze, and it is 147 grain. Um, and then recently I found another box, so that's what this is. Um, I'm going to try to get some more ammo, but like I said, I got I haven't fired an AK in many, many years, and I want to shoot it and kind of see if there's any issues there before I do my full review on that guy. So I probably will take this out with just another mag loaded. Eventually, we will see at least one more video on this. Um, if everything goes as planned, I'd like to get my shooting impressions, as well as I want to change out some stuff on here to make it look a little bit more like a traditional Set Me See. Um, and hopefully I can kind of just wrap all of that up in one video. So, let's go front to back right after I get a drink of my soda. All right. So up front here, I'm going to go over the cleaning kit slash bayonet lug real quick so I can pop it back in. This one's kind of a pain in the butt to get out, so I went ahead and already popped it out. You got a little hole there on the bottom and a little hole up here. You just push it on those with like a tip of a bullet, and then you can work this free. I think this one might be a little stubborn because as you can see, it's, it's bent rather well. And I believe they do advertise saying, you know, we don't guarantee what you're going to get in your cleaning kit. Some cleaning kits may be empty. This one, got a, looks like a jig there, a nylon brush, and some little oil packs. And that is it that is in this guy. Don't know if it's missing anything. Actually... Looking at that, I think that's fairly complete. I don't know if these had collapsible uh, cleaning rods inside of them. These cleaning kits are pretty cheap to get. Like I said, this one's bent rather severely. Eventually, I'll probably order a whole new one, you know, a complete kit. Not that I will ever, 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 ever in my life freaking use it. But just so I know I got one there. Plus, you know, it's just kind of nice, you know. I was a Boy Scout for a little while. Always be prepared. You never know. I said this is kind of a pill there we go locked in there so like I said this is your bayonet lug let me get the bayonet out 
Here's our bandit and scabbard. I got this one new old stock from Sportsman Guide. I think it was like 25 bucks, pretty cheap. These are the newer ones. The 70C was made for a long time, so there's a few different variations on the bandit. I believe there are some that have wood grips, which I'm sure look much better. Has this kind of bolo-esque blade. Spain used this style of blade for a long time on their bayonets. I'll see a lot of people talk about how they bought a uh, surplus bayonet, how it's all completely worn. <laughs> you know, not realizing, nope, that's just how it's made. Got a little mark there, a little mark there. Um, after this bayonet, they had switched to the bayonet for the Set Me L, which is a double-sided bayonet, much more of your kind of traditional modern so, oh, let me show you one more thing. And if you're curious, because who doesn't like pointy things on their guns, this bayonet will lock on there. But because of this proprietary muzzle brake that Sentry uses, which I don't really care for too much, it's a smaller, di <clears throat> smaller diameter than the original flash hider that came on these. So... You know, it looks good as a display, I guess, but you don't want to use it. At the same time, I don't use any of my bayonets, so. Yeah. So, if you really want, you can get a bayonet. The other thing I want to go over with this guy real quick. If I want to pick on classic firearms... So Classic has a YouTube video, and it's still up. I recently checked. The title, I think, is something along the lines with shooting in the woods or talking in the woods. I don't know. Um, it's not shooting the... It's not a specific gun. It's just a generalized shooting video. They shoot a couple different guns. One of them is the C-308. Now, I will give them a little bit of a break because it's not uh, the Clint guy, the regular guy. Um, it's some other guy. I don't know who he is. Um, and he's the one that says this. But it surprised me that, like, Classic hasn't gone back and thrown up a little message on the screen or something correcting it because they sell guns. Um, and we have a record number of new gun owners. Um, and it's probably going to confuse people. People might buy this because they think it has an adjustable gas system. So this guy is, like, helping do the video. They're talking about shooting it, and he was talking about how great of a gun this is and how awesome it is and... How nice it is to have an adjustable gas system to be able to adjust it. Well, like I sh just showed you guys, this isn't an adjustable gas system. This is the bayonet lug. There's a cleaning kit in here. This is not even a gas tube. This gun's not even gas operated. Like in the same, you know, summary that they give of this gun, they're talking about how it's an awesome roller delay. And how it has an adjustable gas system. These guys sell guns. I get it. You know, we all screw up. And like I said, this does look like a gas tube. When I first looked at these and kind of started looking into them a little bit and realized it wasn't a gas tube, I was a little shocked. But these guys sell guns and they didn't correct it. Now, I will say out of curiosity, I hopped in the comments of that video because I'm like, I can't be the only one that's seeing this. Um, and they, they did get ripped apart pretty good um, for that. And, like, maybe it was Clint or Classic Firearms. Someone from Classic Firearms, you know, responded with, Oh, yep, our bad. We're shooting a bunch of different guns that day. Now, I will say, I'm pretty sure every single gun that they have in that video, not a single one of them had an adjustable gas system. I think they're trying to say, Oh, we got confused with another gun we're shooting that day. Maybe it didn't make the cut for the video. I have a feeling they just flat out and goofed up and didn't bother fixing it. And, like I said, it's not a great video. I think they should just take it down. Especially with as many new uh, gun buyers that we have. So, there's my pick on Classic. Guess we'll go over this front to back here. Like I said, it has the Century Arms muzzle brake. They put this on some of their AKs. I think it just looks goofy and not really all that attractive. It doesn't help that the finish does not match. Now, I will say, like the original finish, you can kind of still see it on the rear sight. It is more of a phosphate kind of gray, which matches that muzzle brake. But the rest of the gun is kind of done in this more HK black. Um, which, I once again, I do wish that they did the phosphate color, but they did it black because it's going to look cooler to more people. I think that's the simple truth. 
Um, and sometimes you'll see these with a crush washer on them. Sometimes you'll see it mounted just right up on there. Um, I don't know if that's something that they've changed during production. This one came with a crush washer, as you can see. I do plan on changing this out. Now, I had purchased a surplus Setney flash hider. One, it was really cheap, and also I, I was just assuming that the threads would be the same. But it's just kind of, once again, I haven't cleaned this one up. This one was so covered in Cosmoline that I actually ended up getting a free mag release button because there's a mag release button jammed down in there. So, bonus. But just your, you know, standard HK looking flash hider. Um, so like I said, it's, it is actually a different thread pitch. Now the proper thread pitch, I did not write down. I think it's what is the same thing for AR-10s. Also, it would appear that at least it's the same thread pitch that PTR is using for your, uh, their guns. I got online and I did find several flash hiders that you can tell like HK style copies, which is exactly what the set me looked like. Um, so I don't know if that's one of the things that they, because at one point HK or rather, I guess just Germany and set me, were working on the development, um, of the set me B together. So I'm not sure who came up with that flash hider, um, first. Um, so it's a different thread pitch, but like I said, you can very easily find flash hiders that look the exact same. Um, I don't know if it's 100% the same diameter. So you might find there's still a little bit of play with the bayonet or it could possibly be slightly fatter. Um, that's one of the things I plan on finding out. Now I have had several people tell me, you know, the thread pitch is so close that you actually can thread on a set me flash hider. It will kind of force thread it on. Um, and I've seen pictures. The thing with that is I don't want to screw up my threads. You know, like once I put it on there, I don't see myself changing it out. And I'm sorry, guys, they just put salt down on the road right on the other side of this uh, wall. So if it sounds crunchy, I apologize. Cars going up and down the road right now are very uh, noisy. Um, so like I said, I don't want to screw up the threads. I don't, even though I don't plan on taking the flash hider off again, I just I don't want to screw that up. The other thing that's weird, it's got this weird little collar here. Um, so I don't know if this is a thread adapter, you know, like if I were able to get that off, is that the normal set me threads underneath? Um, but this is made by PTR and I do believe that set me and HK, um, did use a different thread pitch. Um, I could be wrong on that. So it wouldn't make sense for PTR to make one with the set me threads, but at the same time, I mean, what the hell is this thing? You know, it looks like it's got a pin in there, like pin and welded on both sides. Um, so, but like I said, I'm just going to play it safe. Um, I'll just get one of the, uh, new made flash hiders and put that on there. And then we got this little, uh, lug here, I guess we can call it. it. Does have a little gas ring in there and that is for firing rifle fired grenades. Um, but the handy dandy thing, and I really do like the fact that they put that on there. I believe the earlier century builds did not have those, but what that is little spot here for our bipod and it's got legs that extend out um so that's convenient this is a pretty heavy duty um bipod it's got wire cutters down in there and this will also work on the set to me l as well so if you have one of those it'll work on both um the handguard so like i said this you've got two different options you have an option of ordering this with polymer furniture, in which case I'm pretty sure you're gonna end up having to change out that handguard. Cause like I said, there's no heat shield underneath. Now, if you like the look of the slim polymer furniture, you can get surplus, you know, military made ones. And those do have the metal heat shield in there. And then they also have the wide handguard, which is what looks like this essentially, just longer. Um, and you can get that to fit on there too. Now, since that's technically an HK part, it might require a little bit of filing, um, but you can fit it on there. I've seen tons of uh, pictures of people that have done that specifically to the C308. And just so you know, if you did that, it's got a little slot here um, for their little bipod that pops out. Um, 
but lately I haven't been able to find any of those bipods for a decent price. Don't even get me started on the collapsible stock for that C93. God dang, those were ridiculously expensive. So, if you get the polymer handguard, you're probably going to want to change out at least the front handguard. I think the butt stocks are just fine. You know, they work. They don't need a heat shield because they don't get hot. Um, the wood ones, the wood's going to dissipate the heat better, but you might still need to replace it. Now, ever since I got this and noticed my issue, um, which to our eagle-eyed viewers may might be noticing right now, um, I started really watching closely to how their handguards were put on. Some of them seem to be on there properly and have a good fitment. Um, I haven't really seen too many that look like this, but what kills me is the uh, like the picture that they have for the listing on this on Classic Firearms. Um, that picture looks just like this. Um, Basically, that little ridge right there should be in the receiver. This should be snug up here like that. It should not be drooping down like this where it looks like a pregnant guppy. And if you look at Classic Firearms, their picture, it, it looks like this. And at one point, sorry guys, I was playing with this and I actually ended up pulling this down quite a bit to the point where I thought I could swing this out. It's probably going to break it up here. I don't feel like breaking that screw, even though I'm sure that's a cheap placement. I just don't want to mess with it. So I was a little frustrated at that, but as you can notice, this is kind of chewed up right there. Now classic does, or it's classic century does say that they do lightly refinish these, you know, and it's got this weird kind of smooth coating that's on there which if you're taking this out in the field and getting your hands wet might be a pain to hold on to. Um, the finger groove on this side is also shallower, or excuse me, this one's deeper than what's on the other side. You can't see it, you can feel it. And this stain over here is also darker than this stain over here. So that's kind of goofy. So, not a hard fix. $25, um, I believe it was Apex, I think it was $25, maybe $35, pretty sure it was $25. This one was listed as being um, in good to very good condition, but I went ahead and bought a surplus, let me see handguard. My opinion, the stain looks a lot better, the wood grain looks a lot better. Um, the finger grooves are cut in at the same depth, one's not way deeper than the other. And I have already put this on here to see if it fit. And guess what? This ring goes up in that receiver. Sorry, the Dr. Pepper sent me. This ring does sit up in that receiver like it's supposed to. And this one, it's a very, very, very tight fit. Almost busted my fingernail getting this off of there because I wanted to show you what it came with and the condition it was in. So cheap, easy fix, not that hard. I'm still going to hit this up with like some Renaissance wax or something. Plus... This color matches the buttstock a little bit better too. Like these, these look like they're supposed to go to go together. The other thing I'm happy about finally getting this video done is I can finally get this handguard off. Like every time, I I mean, that just annoys me. So onward and upward. Oh, and also in case I didn't mention it. This is the original Semi Sling. It did not come with the gun. I purchased that. It does attach with the traditional HK style hook there. And I will say it's kind of got a weird, almost reminiscent Mauser. We'll get to the reasons for that later. Um, little kind of keeper here. It doesn't have like a, you know, a bar to attach it to on this side. So I will see a lot of people with these Woodstock C308s. We'll get a surplus sling and then like, well, how in the hell do I attach this? You just need one of these little keepers. They're not very expensive. Um, and then if that just bugs you because it does look goofy and I'm, I'm almost positive I have this installed correctly. It might not be. Um, but you could also get the old G3 wood stocks and those will have a bar um, in the back. And you could even use this instead of using this keeper. There's another hole. Um, you just get the little button. So, there's that. Um, should go over the charging handle here. So, you load this. 
or chamber with the classy quote unquote HK slap. Um, also, when you do that, make sure your thumb is nowhere near the ejection port. <laughs> You'll have a bigger bruise than that. Um, a lot of people talk about how these are super stiff on these C308s. Now, before I purchased this, I did go to my local FFL and just kind of peek around what he had in the shop, make sure I wasn't missing out on anything. Um, and I walked in there and they're like, are you looking for anything in particular? I was like, ah, C308. And they actually had one up on the wall. <laughs> now the one they had up on the wall came, was the uh, Patriot Brown one. So the flat dark earth. Um, and I don't know if it came with the set me C mag or if the owner had just put a set me C mag in there. Um, cause typically those come with the G3 mags, but with that flat dark earth, like this kind of gray, slightly curved set me mag, it, it looked mwah. It looked really nice. So I was really tempted to get that. The reason I didn't, I do want to change this out to metal. Um, and, you know, I would have lost the flat dark earth lower. Still wouldn't have looked horrible. And then I remember the crappy hand guards. It was a polymer one. So I need to replace that with one with a heat shield. That color would no longer match. So I was just like, forget about it. But I remember handling that one. And that one, when I charged it, I was like, okay, I can see why people say these are stiff. That was a little bit of a workout. Wasn't real bad. Um, some of them were really bad to the point where people were like, I can barely charge it, you know. Um, and I'm, I'm not Mr. Muscles over here. Um, so it definitely was pretty stiff. Then when I got this out of the box and I charged it there, I was like, holy crap. It was way lighter. Um, and so I was talking to the guy behind the counter about how much lighter this was to charge. And so the other one was still there. We got it down. You know, and we're, we're looking at them, and there was definitely a very clear night and day difference between the two. So I don't know if, like, my spring in here is worn out, and so it's easier to push, giving me less resistance. I'm not sure. Um, I think for right now, I'm just going to shoot it. I have seen a lot of people talking about how they had to replace the springs in these C308s, and, like, how once they did, it ran great. Um, so I... I mean, springs aren't too expensive. I'll, I'll probably end up doing that just to, to play it safe. So there's the charging handle for you. Then up top, we do have the pick rail. Now, to be honest, I kind of wish that they offered this as an option, like Mark Lamar did with the Set Me L's. But I get it why they didn't. You know, it's most people, like 99% of the people ordering one of these would want a welded uh, pick row. I just feel like it interrupts the classic lines just a little bit. It's not bad, you know? Um, but of course, like now that it has one, it's like, well, I need to use it. Um, but it's metal. It's welded on here. The other small minor thing with this for quality control wise, you can see on the very last rail there, like the finish is like rubbed off or the finish didn't get properly applied. I'm not sure what happened, but I mean, to be honest with you, I, it doesn't really bug me. I knew what I was getting into when I bought this. And to be honest, with the handguard and with that, I and with it functioning, only 40 rounds, I feel like I probably got a good one. <laughs> then we've got the sight back here. It's kind of a paddle wheel rather than the HK drum. This one is very, 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 very stiff. I was just going to say, oh, it's loosened up. No, it hasn't. Um, so I, I still need to spray some kind of oil on there. Clean it up a little bit, see if I can loosen that up. That's another fairly common complaint I will see on these C308s is how stiff this rear sight is. Got the butt sock. It definitely does have some nicks and dings in it. Um, I thought about ordering a surplus one, just kind of hoping I might get a better one or one with a stock number because I think those look cool. And yeah, I could just paint a number on here, I guess, but it's not the same. Got the rubber butt pad, which is pretty freaking dirty when I look at it on camera here. Um, but surprisingly, it actually has some give to it still. Like this is springier than my Set Me Surplus, uh, my Set Me L Surplus recoil pad. And those were much newer than these. So I found that to be rather interesting. If you're curious what's going on with these holes, why my buttstock, whoa, sorry guys. If you're wondering why my buttstock looks like it's staring you down and sticking its tongue out at you, they put these holes in here. These are your takedown pins for when you're disassembling the gun and taking it apart. And you can put that through here. 
don't know why I'm trying to go from that direction. To hold your pin so it doesn't roll away. And you lose it. So that's the purpose of those holes. Like I said, the mags are either going to get set me um, surplus mags. Or you're going to get the HK aluminum mags. And these are fairly cheap, which is another thing. If you have to have, if you want a variety of mags, you don't care about the furniture. If you plan on completely changing it out, just order the one with the Setney mags. Because like I said, these go from like 25 to 38 bucks. These are like five to seven for a good shaped one. I think I may have paid like seven or eight for this, maybe even less. Got this particular one from Lee's Mags. Um, yeah, I took a gamble on ordering from him. A lot of people complain about him. I've ordered a few times from him. I've never had an issue. Uh, but I can't... Just from hearing what other people say... Um, just like If you're one of those people that order something and then change your mind, you want to cancel it or have a lot of questions... I think this, this, this ain't the source for you. It's You order it and you just leave it alone. It will eventually show up. <laughs> the original set me's would have a paddle mag release as well as the push button mag release. I don't really know why they had both, which is kind of interesting. Um, but they got rid of the paddle mag release um, because they had to get rid of the pin. This originally had one of these style pins. It was a smaller one in here as well. But the ATF doesn't want you to be able to buy one of the surplus fully automatic lowers and just throw it in there. So these newer, now some of the older um, civilian semi-autos did have that pin in there as well. Um, but the uh, all the C-308s, they're going to be like this. They got rid of the pin. They have a little shelf that this kind of locks into there. Um, and like I said, you can buy metal lowers. And I've even seen metal lowers that have like a fake pin on the end. So it looks like it's pinned. So you still get that authentic look. But you lose the mag release or the paddle mag release. And there are also kits out there to reinstall paddle mag releases that don't use a pin so you're, you're not in you know any trouble there um but they look kind of like a pain in the butt i don't really plan on doing fast you know mag chain changes with this or anything like that so to me for for me it's just not worth the hassle so i'm probably not going to mess with that part still got the push button mag release here which is almost completely in the white all the finish is worn off so i'm glad i got that free mag release in the flash hider because that one has all the bluing on it this might be a pain in the butt through a change out. I still haven't looked into it, but I might change that. And that mag release is in the perfect spot if you have ET length fingers. So there's that. And like I said, this comes with the polymer lower. Originally, these had a metal lower like this here. Um, I ordered this a while back. Um, I think it was like five bucks. I needed to add like three dollars to my order to get free shipping. And so this is what I ended up getting. I didn't really plan on, a lot of times people will buy these and modify them themselves. You know, grind this out and put it in a shelf there. I think you also have to change up the safety lever. That was not my intent. Um, I was probably just gonna buy one of the HK style um, lowers. I know there are ones specifically marked for C308, um, but I do not believe, I don't think anyone's actually making um, the Spanish shelved set me lowers. So which is kind of unfortunate because that would be cool. And I believe, once again, I might be wrong, but I believe that T was semi-auto, S was safe, and then R was full auto. Whereas if you were to take this trigger pack out of here and put it in there, um, the T is going to be your safe and the S is going to be your fire. Um, but yeah, there's the original lower. Covered in grease. The trigger, I wrote that down somewhere. Um, this will vary a bunch from review to review as well. Some people say these triggers are absolutely horrible. Other ones are like, wow, it's not bad. This one falls into the, wow, it's not bad category. Um, now, I do believe that these are the original set me trigger assemblies in here. Obviously, it's modified, so it can't be switched into full auto. But I have seen some people saying that these are actually, once again, supplied by PTR. Now, from what I can tell, and I don't have a whole lot of HKs here to compare. From what I can tell, though, the HKs, which is what PTR makes copies of, the HKs use like a coil-type spring. Whereas this has more kind of like an HK-type hammer spring. 
Um, and the uh, Setmes had the HK style hammer spring. So I believe that this is a surplus trigger um, pack here. At least parts of it are. The trigger pull on this one, um, average over five pulls, was six pounds, 2.8 ounces. Now I will say, when I first started doing um, my trigger pull test with this with my lineman, that my first two trigger pulls were 10 point something pounds. And then all of a sudden I noticed the, the weight just dropped. Um, so at that point, I just reset it. Um, I tested several pulls once again, just to make sure it was at least consistent. Um, and it was, I don't know if like some oil or something dripped down in there or what. Um, something was sticking. I don't know what was going on. Um, so once I cleared it after the weird two anomaly 10 pound trigger pulls, like I said, those were the first two when I started this test. They've been sitting in the closet for a little bit. But the average over five pulls was six pounds, 2.8 ounces. So for a military trigger, I feel like that's not bad at all. Um, and I also will say that the reset was actually surprisingly uh, short on this. So um, yeah, it's not bad. So I think we've kind of covered everything on this. Um, accuracy, I'm stuck using an indoor range right now. So I'm only pushing that to 75 feet. Also, when I took this out, I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't just blah, 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 like not paying attention to where I was shooting, but I wasn't taking a whole lot of time. I wasn't, you know, concentrating on my breathing, um, mostly because I just kept expecting a jam and I was kind of anxious to see um, how bad this was. But like I said, I didn't have any issues with it. Um, the groupings were pretty decent. Um, I was kind of surprised, especially considering I wasn't really trying my hardest um, to get good grouping. So now I'm kind of curious about this. You'll see a lot of people talk about how the accuracy is absolutely atrocious on these. Um, other people will talk about how it's, you know, once again, it falls into the, yeah, it's not bad category, but they're like, you know, for serious distance, this probably isn't the gun for you. And those are from the people that are, you know, saying it's, it's decently accurate. Um, so I, I was kind of surprised with the accuracy on this. I was happy with it. Uh, recoil wasn't bad. It's roller delay. So it's what you can expect. Very soft recoil. Um, and this does have the set me muzzle brake on there. And I've heard people talk about how much an improvement that makes. I don't know if they're trying it with it on and with it off. You can't say it makes a huge improvement if you simply shoot it with it on there. You know what I mean? It's like, you don't know if that's the muzzle brake or if that's just the gun. Um, but like I said, I plan on putting the flash hider on there. And even if it does get a little more kick from that, it, it was light enough. It's, it's not an issue at all. So there's that. Okay. Now, I think we are ready to jump into the history right after my drink break. All right. So, this is the fun, long, boring part. And once again, guys, um, I'm no Ian or Michiko um, or whatever that guy's name from Small Arm Solutions is. Sorry, guy. You're, you're great. Or... Uh, Oh, who's the other channel I never, ever mention? And I love them. Oh, CNR Arsenal. You know, I'm no Meg. Um, so, this is the cliff notes of the history here, at best. 1949 is when Set Me was founded. Now, what does Set Me stand for? Well, I embarrassed myself in the Set Me L video by saying this, so I might as well do it on this one, too. Set Me stands for... Centro de Estudios Técnicos de Materiales Especiales. I apologize for mispronouncing every one of those words. Um, so there's your set me uh, founding. Now to begin the story for the set me C, we're going to hop in our way back time machine. You guys listen to stuff you know? It's a good podcast. Um, and we're going to go back to World War II Germany, or rather, the very end of World War II Germany. And once again, I see people talk about how it was one engineer. I see other people talk about how it's actually kind of like a group of engineers. Um, I didn't bother to dive too deep into it, because like I said, I'm just giving you the cliff notes. Um, so these engineer or engineers first apparently went to France. 
They had been working on, um, at the end of World War II, these were Mauser ex-engineers, I don't know if I mentioned that, which might explain the uh, kind of K98 style sling setup there. Um, but they were working on the STG-45 towards the end of the war. Obviously, the war ends. Germany's industry is pretty much non-existent. They probably weren't allowed to produce guns right away either. So these uh, Mauser engineers, well, they, they needed a job, right? And what they knew how to do, they could not do in Germany. So they went to France. Not sure what happened to France. Don't know how long they were there, but they left France. And they went to Spain. And in Spain, they started working on, in 1950, started working on the Modelo 2. Now, I believe this was a prototype. I don't think it ever went into full production. But that was a roller delay setup um, around the 8 millimeter Kurtz. Side note, I actually have an 8 millimeter Kurtz for a while. I was trying to get dummy rounds of all the different calibers from World War II. And I have an 8 millimeter Kurtz dummy round, and I was like, I'm never going to use this. And my one chance to use it, I can't find them. Okay, enough feeling bad for me. So then, uh, 1953 and 1954, Semi started developing a new round for use with the roller delay setup. And they developed the 7.92 by 40, which later turned into the 7.92 by 41. Now, shortly after that, in 1955, NATO had adopted the 7.62 round. Um, so they uh, set me started playing around with the 7.62 round, and the uh, I, th I believe this was still the Modelo 2. Um, It might have been the set me a. Anyways, uh, let's just say they played around with the uh, seven six two round, the NATO round, in this. And what they discovered, it would work. It did function, but it was really rough on the components in there. So they kind of ended up with a rifle that functioned, but was not going to be durable, was not going to be reliable. So their answer to that was they developed a seven six two set me cartridge. Now, the dimensions, I believe, were the exact same as the 7.62 NATO cartridge, but it just had less of a powder charge. Um, also, these were available in full auto, um, which if you think about shooting 7.62 in full auto, it's like, well, that's a workout. But when they were developing these in full auto, it was that 7.62 set me cartridge that reduced recoil. So it makes a little more sense um, why these were offered in full auto. So then uh, they produced the Set Me A, and that was chambered in the 762 Set Me cartridge, the uh, reduced power. Then they came out with the Model B, and early on the B was chambered in 762 Set Me. At some point, they did switch over to the 762 NATO cartridge, which I think just sounds like a horrible idea because the 762 NATO Set Me Bs could fire the 762 set me cartridge but the set me bees that were chambered in 762 set me could not fire the 762 nato cartridge actually it probably would it probably just beat the hell out of the components um and the set me b is also when germany kind of joined along in the development of this um and so let's jump into that real quick um, so Germany was doing some trials some years later. They finally have some industry going for them. Um, and they entered in the set me B and the Belgian FNFAL. I prefer to call it foul. And I know people freak out about that, but I really doubt you say, Hey, can you hand me the L A S E R pointer? No, you say, Hey, can you hand me the laser pointer? You don't spell out radar. You say radar. So I'm going to call it a foul. I also say aug. Anywho, um, Germany was running trials. Uh, the semi B did not win the trials. I think it came in second. But the FAL one. God, foul. What have you guys done to me? The foul one. Um, the foul one. <laughs> Sounds like someone that stinks. Um, the FN one. Um, so part of Germany wanting to adopt a new rifle they also wanted to be able to produce the rifle in country which is an unusual a lot of countries do that for their military rifles belgium 
Well, they were still a little suspicious because they're like, well, we remember the Great War and its sequel, and we're not about to let you start making our foul in Germany. Um, so they went up with the old runner up, the Set Me uh, B. Um, they would later uh, make their own version of the Set Me B, um, and they would adopt that rifle as the G. Now, HK was not even the first company to make the G3s. Um, that was actually another company. They produced them, I think, just for a limited time. Um, and I think originally they were planning on having both companies make the G3. But in the end, HK ended up being the sole manufacturer of the G3. So, like, it, the G3 has so many features that people are like, oh, it's classic HK. Like, the way you charge it, the HK slap the HK, you know, clip for the sling. And even in Germany, HK wasn't the first company to make the G3. So that's also why I say it's, when someone says, oh, you know, they're looking at a, a G3 and they're like, oh, I love German engineering. And you're like, oh, ha, 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 you idiot. These came from Spain. But at the same time, they still are correct because these were ex-German engineers. So... Um, it's, it's German engineering straight out of Spain. And, uh, I don't know if I said it, but Germany adopted officially the G3, which was, um, basically a set me B. They did change things and it went through its own kind of growth with, uh, Germany as well. But 1959, Germany adopted the G3. Um, so then... Let's see, in 1958, we're back in Spain. Sorry, we're going to jump back to Spain. Um, in 1958, um, they started making the Set Me C, or at least commissioned the Set Me C. It might have been a year later that they actually made it. Um, and all of the Set Me Cs were chambered for 7.62 NATO. Um, often you'll also see the C referred to as the Model 58. I've seen the Model 58 kind of refer to the A, B, and C. Um, but the, the 58 specifically is just the C almost always people refer, will refer to it as the set me C, but occasionally you'll see people refer to it as the model 58. Just so you know, the 58 is the C. Um, and the C lived a pretty long service life. So it was in frontline service until the eighties. And then it was, uh, with reserve units up until the 1990s. So it, it did live a pretty long and healthy life. Now, you know, by the 80s, you know, 5.56 five, is like, who the hell is still using 7.62 NATO? We need to switch over to 5.56. Five, five, so what Germany did, or at this point, rather, officially HK, what HK did was they took their G3 and really, like, all they did was they, they shortened it. They gave it a shorter barrel, shorter magwell, shorter receiver. I don't know if that, I, I've yet to actually compare the bolt carrier. I don't know if they actually shortened the bolt carrier. Um, but they didn't really modify too much. They just kind of shortened everything down for the 5.56 cartridge. And they produced, like I showed you earlier, the HK-33. Or the civilian version, the uh, 33 and all, or the 93 and all the other different variations. But you can see that is, you know, HK, it's just, or uh, that's a G3, it's just shortened. So there's that. Um, I don't believe Germany actually ended up adopting that. Um, I'll have the answer for you on that when I finally do the review on my 93. Um, but HK did develop that. What Spain did... Because they're like, well, we want a 5.56. Five, five, we also like the roller delay. Um, and they're the, you know, the papa of this. They developed the gun from the ground up to use the 5.56 five, five, cartridge. Now, they definitely, you know, took note from the, the setmes, the Cs. Um, lots of features are similar, but it is a different gun. It's a different receiver. Um, this trigger housing, it's different. Uh, the charging setup is slightly different, but there are a lot of cues. But at the same time, a lot of times people will be like, oh, that's just a G3 chambered in 5.56. Five, 
Um, but it is its own gun. So what Set Me came out with was the Set Me L. Now originally these would be all green. This is a Mark Lamar build. I do have some videos on this as well. But as you can see, it's got that charging handle. It does not lock up. Instead, it has a little baton here to lock it in there. Um, this receiver, it comes down to cover the trigger housing. Um, it's also much thinner. Well, not much thinner. It's thinner. Um, so this is a different gun. I mean, it's the same idea, um, but the bolt carrier is also different. Eventually, I'll do a video comparing all of these internals, I guess. So, that's what they produced. Another thing that I just recently learned about is the G3s technically are free float barrels. Um, on the HK G3s, this is not welded right here. They're kind of, it's just kind of like pushed up. And so your front uh, sight block here, it's attached to the barrel, but this part is not actually attached. Um, they did not do that with this. I do not know if the Setneys ever had that feature, or if that's something that um, HK kind of designed, if that was one of their improvements. Now I will say my Century built 93 here, it does not have that as well. I don't know if that's something they ditched on the 93 or if that's just because it's a Century build. I will say, however, once I discovered this, it got me looking at my Mark Lamar. Well, they definitely took note, or set me, rather took note for the set me L. And this that's how this one is set up. It's actually not attached. It's just kind of, uh, it's got a little lip in here and it goes over that. So, I thought that was kind of cool. So I wanted to point that out because like I said, I don't know if the original set me C's had that feature or if that's just something that HK added down the road. All right, um, I think all we got left is just kind of an honorable mention. Um, and I haven't, oh, I guess I already did mention Michiko in my video. Well, I'm gonna mention him, mention him again. He pointed this out, the connection between the, uh, the FR8 and the Setme, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, especially because I knew of the FR8, it caught my eye years ago, because I was like, oh, check it out. It's a gas operated bolt action. Wait a minute, it's a bolt action, but it's got a gas tube, but it's got a bolt. So the, uh, the FRA, it looks like a gas-operated bolt action. It's, it's not, obviously. But what is cool about that is it uses the same kind of little front sight ring set up here. So the top ring is your sight still. The middle ring actually has the barrel coming through it. And then this bottom ring has this exact same cleaning kit and bayonet lug on it. So the bayonet attaches to the bottom of the barrel for that. Uh, the FR8 also has the same set me flash hider and uses the same set me uh, bayonet. So I thought that was kind of neat. The FR8 was never frontline. I think it was like for training and police and stuff. Um, but I just kind of thought that was a cool uh, little feature crossover there. All right, guys. So all in all, um, you know, 650 I don't think was a bad deal for this, but at the same time, this kind of has a specific spot in my collection. You know, I've got the HK93, I've got the Set Me L that uh, replaced this. Um, and so far from shooting it, it it is a hoot to shoot. It is very fun. Um, I said 650, let's go ahead and say 675, since I have to, have to replace the handguard there. Um, so I wouldn't pay $1,000 for this gun, guys. If you're going to pay $1,000, get a freaking PTR. Um, like, and a lot of people will see, even say, like, you know, if you're spending six fifty dollars on this, why not just spend a couple hundred more? You're going to get a gun that has a much better reputation. Um, it's going to have better features. It's going to have a better front sight. It's going to have a better rear sight. Um, and I, I, I totally get that, but pretty much simply because I have the Set Me L, you know, and... And 650, it's not horrible. It's not very much for a roller delay. Um, that's the reason I wanted to get this. Now, if you're wanting to do a G3 clone, which a lot of people will do with these, and you can make it look very close to a G3, but if you're going to do it proper, like 
that rear sight is just going to jump at, at you like crazy. The front sight is not correct. Um, and at that point, I would just spend a couple hundred more. Um, and you're going to get something that is, you can make a true G3 clone on top of, once again, you know, just you're getting a gun that has a much better reliability um, and all that. You'll get picked on less. <laughs> So yeah, that's it guys. Um, eventually we'll see her again in at least one video. Um, I appreciate everyone that has stuck through me all one hour and 15 minutes and counting. Um, if you're still watching and you do not subscribe to my channel, I, you need to subscribe if you made it through this whole video. Um, and if you're watching and you fell asleep on the couch and that's the only reason you've gotten to this point, wake up. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Stay shiny. Adios.